Australia's Hobart-class guided missile destroyers were built to do one job above all others. Hold the line in the air and missile fight when the maritime operating environment stops being permissive. That job has become harder, not easier. Indo-Pacific naval warfare is increasingly shaped by long-range surveillance, electronic attack and dense salvos of cruise missiles, and increasingly capable anti-ship ballistic missiles. In that environment, the Hobarts are not simply big ships with good radars. They are Australia's moving node in a wider allied kill web, and the credibility of that node depends on software, integration, and upgrade discipline as much as steel and propulsion. That is why the Hobart-class midlife combat system upgrade under Project CA-4000 Phase 6 matters. It is not a cosmetic refresh. It is a deliberate decision to keep Australia's principal at-sea air warfare capability interoperable with close allies and relevant against the threat trajectories most likely to define the late 2020s and 2030s. Recent Australian reporting has made clear that the core of this effort is the upgrade of the Aegis Combat System software and selected hardware to the Baseline 9 configuration. Combined with an Australian interface approach, designed to improve integration, usability, and long-term sustainment. The strategic logic is straightforward. The Hobarts entered service in the late 2010s with an Aegis configuration that was world-class at the time. But Aegis is a living system. The difference between a credible air warfare destroyer and a legacy platform with a good radar is often found in the pace of combat system evolution. Track management, Sensor fusion, engagement coordination, electronic protection, and the ability to plug seamlessly into allied networks. Aegis Baseline 9 represents a major step forward because it enables more advanced integrated air and missile defense functions and improves how ships fight in complex, overlapping threat environments that include ballistic, cruise, and airborne threats simultaneously. For an Australian audience, the critical point is that this upgrade is not only about what the destroyer can shoot down, it is about how it sees, decides, and collaborates. In a high-end conflict, no single ship fights alone. It operates as part of a distributed sensor and shooter ecosystem, sharing data, queuing weapons, and managing engagements across multiple domains. The Hobarts must be able to receive and pass targeting quality data, operate under electronic attack, and coordinate engagements with allied platforms. A modernized Aegis baseline is the foundation for that capability. Just as important is the Australianization layer. The combat system must be usable, adaptable, and supportable within Australia's own force design and industrial framework, not treated as a black box import. This is where the Saab Australian interface becomes operationally significant. The launch of the Hobart-class combat system upgrade through formal tasking arrangements marked the shift from design intent to executed integration. For practitioners, that transition matters more than announcements. It signals that the program has moved into hands-on engineering, testing, and system-of-systems -systems integration, with Australian industry embedded alongside global partners. The broader aim is consistency, aligning the Hobart-class combat system approach with the future Hunter-class frigates so that Australia does not end up operating multiple fleets with incompatible digital architectures. A midlife upgrade is always more than software. The ship itself must be modified safely and predictably. Space, power, cooling, cabling, shock resistance, and maintainability all impose real constraints. That is why Platform Design Authority and Ship Alteration Engineering are decisive elements of SEA 4000 Phase 6. The completion of detailed ship alteration drawings represents the point where combat system ambition meets physical reality. It is the unglamorous but essential work that determines whether an upgrade proceeds smoothly or becomes a source of delay and cost growth. Australia's defense industrial dimension is not a side issue. It is part of deterrence. A destroyer that can be modernized domestically with Australian engineers, technicians, and sustainment systems deeply involved 
is a platform that can adapt over time rather than slowly falling behind. Progress through Australia-based design and engineering centres demonstrates that this program is being treated as a genuine through-life capability investment rather than a one-off fix. The scale of investment underlines this point. The sums associated with keeping the Hobart-class combat system relevant into the 2030s and beyond run into multiple billions of Australian dollars. That level of commitment signals that Canberra intends these ships to remain central to maritime operations for decades. This matters because Australia is simultaneously managing several capital-intensive naval programs. Without a credible midlife upgrade, the risk would be an air defense capability gap precisely at a time when regional missile threats are growing more sophisticated. The timing of the upgrade is also strategically deliberate. Australia has recently demonstrated long-range strike capabilities from its surface fleet, reinforcing the idea that air defense and strike are being developed in parallel. The Hobart upgrade is designed to ensure that as ships cycle through extended maintenance and modernization periods, the fleet emerges with a step change in capability rather than simply restored availability. This is a calculated readiness trade. Fewer ships available in the short term in exchange for much greater combat relevance in the long term. Operationally, the Hobart class upgrade can be understood as three interlocking lines of effort. The first is the evolution of the Aegis combat system itself, with Baseline 9 providing the architecture for integrated air and missile defense in a networked environment. The second is the Australian combat system interface and integration layer, designed to ensure that allied technology works effectively within Australian command, training, and sustainment systems. The third is the physical modification of the ships to host new systems safely and sustainably. All three must succeed for the upgrade to deliver its intended value. What does this buy Australia strategically? It buys time and credibility in the decade that matters most. The late 2020s and early 2030s are a transition period in which Australia is investing heavily in future force design while still relying on today's fleet to deter and, if necessary, fight. Modernized Hobart-class destroyers can anchor task groups, protect high-value units, and contribute meaningfully to allied integrated air and missile defense architectures. They also serve as a learning platform, giving Australia experience in managing complex, software-driven naval upgrades at scale. There are real risks, and they should be acknowledged. Midlife upgrades can become schedule traps if integration challenges are underestimated. Combat system modernization requires discipline testing, cybersecurity accreditation, and workforce continuity. Extended shipyard periods reduce fleet availability and place pressure on crew training and retention. The mitigation lies in governance, industrial throughput, and realism rather than optimism. The encouraging signal is that Australia is approaching this upgrade with structured integration frameworks and early industry alignment rather than deferring hard problems to later phases. For Australian audiences looking for a clear takeaway, the conclusion is simple. The Hobart-class destroyers are being upgraded because Australia cannot afford to let its principal air warfare capability erode while the wider fleet modernizes. SEA 4000 Phase 6 is not about making the ships newer for their own sake. It is about ensuring they remain credible in the most demanding aspect of naval warfare, defending forces against modern air and missile threats in a contested networked battle space. If executed well, this upgrade keeps the Hobarts relevant into the 2040 timeframe. More importantly, it gives Australia the strategic breathing space to bring future maritime capabilities online without accepting an avoidable gap in air and missile defense. In an era where deterrence is increasingly about integration, resilience, and speed of adaptation, the Hobart-class midlife upgrade is not a technical footnote. It is a core element of Australia's maritime security posture for the next generation.